this would be a better way. 3.2 meters. Four point seven. This street behind me, it's changing. For a long time, nothing has changed with this street, but the neighborhood around it went through a huge transformation. For one thing, the street is no longer just single family homes with amazing fences like this one. Now there are a lot more people living around the street because of developments like this multifamily one and this one across the street. And because there are more people living in this neighborhood, there's also more businesses and local shops. And because there's lots of people around and lots of cool places to go, there's lots more people walking and riding their bikes here. You should see this place in the summertime. And because this neighborhood has cool places to see and lots of people and activity, People in other neighborhoods who don't have this stuff because they don't have enough people to sustain it, well, they're visiting a lot more. And the way they usually get here is in their car. So there's also a lot more car traffic in this neighborhood. And throughout all of those changes through the years, this street has basically remained the same. But that's about to change. Hey everybody, I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling, bike commuting, and the ways we get around our cities. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you're probably like me when you see the opportunity for a redesign on a street like this in a neighborhood like this, you get excited about the potential of giving space back to humans, people on foot, on bikes, on scooters, and deprioritizing the dominance, almost complete street dominance of the automobile. But having attended a public meeting about this project recently, I can say that is not the consensus. There are certainly a lot of people out there who think that because it's so crowded with traffic here, the answer is to make room for more cars. And underlining all of this conversation and like so many other similar conversations in cities all over North America is the big P word, parking. Where am I going to leave my car? Why can't I park it? And why can't I park for free? Now I'm going to resist my usual urge to say that you can have a great neighborhood or you can have great parking, but you can't have both. I'm not going to say that. But what I will say is for cities, redesigning streets like this in a way that will please everybody is really, really difficult. And just for fun, I want us to redesign this street to make it better. What does better mean? I don't know. That's for you to decide. Does it mean more bike lanes? Does it mean more space for pedestrians? Does it mean more space for cars? Does it mean a trolley? I don't know. That's what we're going to find out. I'm asking all of you to redesign this street and let's see what we can come up with. Here's how we're going to do it. Using an online tool called Street Mix, I'm going to build the existing street in the tool as a template. Then I'm going to turn it over to you guys and you can let your creativity run wild. Redesign the street however you want. But let's not lose sight of reality here. There's a few rules in this game. Number one is you can't add space. The street is as big as it is. There's no room to add any more space, but you can realign that space however you want. This street is being redesigned among the principles of what my city calls a main street. And the values of a main street are this, social and healthy lifestyle, mobility and functionality, character and identity, and economic vitality. So your street design should align to those values. Number three is like any good city planner, you shouldn't lose sight of what people in the neighborhood want. According to the city's engagement, and we'll save the conversation about what makes good engagement for another day, here is what the neighborhood, the community said to the city uh, during the engagement process that was important to them. Number one, pedestrians and landscaping. Number two, parking. Number three, transit and traffic. Number four, bicycles. And number five, good movement. Now, I'm not really sure what that last one means, good movement. And I think some of these uh, values are probably at odds with each other, but hey, this is the kind of reality that cities have to deal with. So you have to deal with it too. Don't lose sight of those. I'll give you a couple more details about the street, but I don't want to flood you with information. Um, there are bike routes connected at each end of the street. Uh, the street is connected to the wider road network. Uh, there are businesses almost all along the street that people want to visit. And I'll just say that it's busy with car traffic. It's busy with pedestrians. I'd say there's not a lot of cyclists there right now, mostly because it's there's nowhere for them to ride. I mean, I don't feel that safe riding on that street, so I don't do it a lot. But there is a desire for cycling because there are lots of cyclists around and community engagement said that was important. 
So that's the detail. I'm also not gonna saddle you with like all the engineering requirements and the minimums for parking width and that kind of thing too. You know, I, I, for a couple of reasons. One is I think those rules are, in some cases, maybe a bit outdated and they do limit the sort of creativity that can go into a street. And number two, ugh, this is supposed to be fun. Let's just have some fun with it. Once you've redesigned the street how you like it, send it to me. Uh, I've got a form that I'll link in the description down below uh, and you could submit it to me and we'll collect a bunch and uh, I don't know, well, I'll make another video where we'll go through all these together. I have no idea what's going to happen and uh, eventually we'll compare this to what the city actually is going to do. So I think it might be a fun exercise in imagining yourself as a city planner because I feel like so many of us are already armchair planners. So all the links are in the description that you need. Uh, have a go at it. This could be fun. Let's see what we come up with. And if nobody responds to this, then I'll just pretend this video never happened. All right, that's it. Thank you for taking part. And uh, let's see what we get. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.